All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Bob's Magic Emporium. Time for the next all new The School of Magic. Classes in session every Friday on the School of Magic. All right, so we have a really great trick today. I'm calling this one Cards at the Store Counter. And uh, the reason I'm calling it that is because you need a store counter for this trick. So go out and buy yourself a store counter and come on back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you can use this with anything, though. A window, a chalkboard. Um, you could use it on the ceiling, on a wall, whatever you want to do. Um, but it's a really fun trick. And make sure if you try the trick, to uh, let me know how it goes in the comments down below if you try any of the School of Magic tricks. All right, here's what's going to happen. Uh, we're going to perform the trick, then I'll do a, a little tutorial on it. So I have a deck of cards I've been shuffling. If there's a spectator, get, they get to cut the cards anywhere they want. So we'll say they cut them right there. And we're going to mark where they've cut. All right, so now I'm going to try to find the card, not using sleight of hand, but using my store counter right here. So we're going to see what happens here. So uh, go ahead and take a look at the card. I'm going to look at it, too, for the purpose of the demonstration. Seven of Diamonds. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to place the Seven of Diamonds back in the deck. I'm going to actually hold the deck in my teeth. That's to prove that I'm not holding anything fancy in the cards, like a break or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give these cards a quick little uh, cut here. That way I thoroughly mix up and lose your card. Now, I'm gonna, now your card is somewhere in this deck, and I'm going to try to find it. So here we go. I'm going to try to find this card. Ready? One, two, three. Right there, the seven of diamonds. Now, I'm not going to touch it because I want you to see that it's on the inside of the store counter. So let me run over here and let me um, get this card out of the store counter here. Right, I go down here. I've got to grab it out of here. All right, there it is right there. Perfect. And was that your card? The Seven of Diamonds. All right, so let me tell you how the trick works. Um, you need something solid like a store counter or, well, or like, like a window, or you could, you could do this on the ceiling or do it on a wall or on a chalkboard, but here's what you're going to do. You're going to take the card, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to take the card, and you're going to put a little bit of double-sided tape either on the back or on the front. Now, if you're going to, like, have it on the ceiling, what you want to do is double side tape the back of it and shove it up on the ceiling. If you're going to do it on a wall, put uh, double side tape on the back. But what I did was because the store counter is here and I wanted you to see it, there's a little bit of double side tape that's left on the store counter. i got to try to get that off when I'm done filming. But I'm going to go stick the card back on the store counter. Let me go run and do that now. So watch, just a little double sided tape, boom, right there. And when you put this card up, try to put it at an angle. Don't put it like straight horizontal or straight vertical because when you throw the cards, you're not going to throw them straight. They're going to go a little every which way. So you want to make sure you do that. So what I'm going to do is pick up my cards here. And you will get a little messy in this trick um, because the cards will go everywhere. So And it's going to make a nice huge mess. So um, what you want to do is when you start the trick, you want to block your body so that you can't see the trick. Because you probably noticed I was kind of sitting kind of awkwardly. I was kind of trying to block the card with my body. So that's what you want to do. If the card is on a window, which some street magicians do when they put it on a window, normally you'll have an assistant, though, to help you. Because normally the card won't be on the window at the start of the trick, and you have your body blocked, and the assistant plops the card up there. Which you can do that as well. But I try to block my body. You can, if you do it on a chalkboard, you want to block the card on the chalkboard. Your, whatever you want to get a duplicate card and throw it up wherever you're going to reveal it at, whether it be on a piece of glass, uh, behind a piece of glass. If you do it though on a window or something like that, don't have it on the front side of the window, the side you're standing on. Like what I did here, I put it against the glass on the other side. So it, they, it physically penetrated the glass, which is cool. All right, so grab this, grab the same card that matches your duplicate out of your deck. So I'm going to sit like this so you can see the card in view. So it goes right on the top of the deck. And uh, if you want to do a riffle shuffle, you can certainly do that. That's what I was doing. We've learned how to riffle shuffle a couple weeks ago uh, in a couple of the other things. But you just got to riffle shuffle and the top card you want to leave at the top. So riffle shuffle. And yes, it takes a lot of skill to do this without a table. And you just leave that top card right as it is. So I'm going to try to show that to you from the exposed angle so you can see how this works. I think it's going to be better this way. So notice when I riffle shuffle, I just riffle shuffle like that. And notice what I do is leave that top card, the seven of diamonds, right on top. And it falls right on top. And I square everything up. And you can do that a couple times. If you know any false cuts, you can do those as well. 
So remember, you're blocking that card with your body. And normally you'd be standing, so you'd be able to block it a little bit better than, than sitting. Uh, but anyways, you're then going to do the uh, forcing of a card. You can use your favorite card, force, whatever one you want. The one I did in the, uh, in the uh, performance was the cross-cut force, where you, where you have the spectator cut the cards anywhere they want. So we'll say the cut them about right there. You cut them, and you take the bottom half of the deck, and you cross it over like you're marking. Now, if you were really doing this correctly, uh, what you're do it, it, if you weren't forcing the card, you would lift up and immediately turn this like that because you're marking where they've actually cut. What you're actually marking in the cross-cut force is you lift up and you're taking the bottom half and you're marking the top card. But, but if you do this right and you do a lot of time misdirection, you lift up, you take the bottom half, whoops, take the bottom half and cross it this way and place it over the top card like that. So you made a cross. That's why it's called the cross cut force. So you do a lot of time misdirection. Notice that when I did the force, I didn't immediately show the card. I said, now I'm going to try to find your card using a special ability, da 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 and you make up your own pattern for this. So once about 30 seconds to a minute have gone by, then you lift it up and you show them the card that you forced on them, but they think they have chosen freely. You show the card, place it, uh, and make sure they know what it is. You don't look at it. When I look at it in these demos, it's just because I don't have a spectator here to know if the card works, even though I know the card already, but I have to make it look like I don't know the card. Uh, but you wouldn't have, you don't look at it. You have them place it back in the deck anywhere they want. I uh, place it back in. You can have them shuffle the deck if you want. You can cut the cards, whatever. You can just say, okay, we're going to try to find the card. Um, it's personal preference. The cutting and the um, shuffling does nothing to the trick. Uh, just it mixes up the card and, you, and they lose it even more. So you can have the spectator do that if you want. Now you can do one of two things to reveal the card. You can do what I did in the in the uh, performance, which was take the deck, fan it out, and throw it. Or you can spring the cards. And let me explain uh, about the um, about the um, the blocking of the trick. So you are st normally you do this standing, not sitting, but you're blocking the card with your body. And you want to turn a little bit more, but as you turn, make sure not to turn too much and reveal that card. So you're going to turn a little bit, say your card is somewhere in here, and we're going to take these cards, and we're going to try to uh, use a little and do a little magic with these cards. So you take the cards, and you throw them. Now, you want to make sure you, you turn and throw at the same time. So don't do this, and then throw, because they can see the card. You want to immediately as you're turning, you want to toss those cards. So as soon as your full body turns, those cards have already hit, smacked, and fell to the ground. So it looks like this. Room, boom, fall. So that's what it should look like. Now, you, again, you can throw these cards like I did because we're going to learn how to spring the cards in a moment. But some people aren't very good at springing cards, which is fine. So you can also just take the cards, fan them out in your hands. Or if you're not even good at fanning, you can just kind of clump them up in your hands and throw them. Uh, the best thing is if you throw the cards. The spectator can throw the cards. The problem is you got to worry about them seeing the cards. That's why if you throw it, you have complete angle control. And... Um, if you're doing it some, if you're doing the trick like I'm doing it here, notice that I have a window back here or I have a door. So this can be done from all angles, except really from the sides of this these cabinets. You can't really do it from the sides, but you can do it uh, kind of surrounded. And in a street setting, if you have like a window uh, that's just like this and there's no sides to it, then you can definitely do it that way. All right. So the spring cards, it looks a little more magical when you actually spring the cards instead of taking them and just throwing them against the glass. But I wanted to show you the basic thing. You can just throw the cards. To spring the cards, all you do is you bellow the card. You put, um, you put your pinky, middle, and ring finger on the bottom. Thumb goes on the top, and your pointer finger goes on the back. And you're going to bevel the cards slightly. And all you do is, it's just going to take a little practice. It's going to sound a little tougher than it is. All you do is you just release the cards. I'm going to try to do this slowly. Release the cards like that, and they're just going to fly off. Now, your thumb's just going to go back on the cards, like you're going to do a riffle of the cards. Basically like you're doing this, but you're instead of holding the cards, you're going to just let them go. So to spring the cards, it goes just like this. You go like that, and you spring the cards against the glass. And it looks a lot more magical when you actually spring the cards. It makes a really nice sound. 
uh, when you spring them, and it makes a really nice sound when it hits, makes that sound. So that's really nice when it does that. So let me do that one more time. I'm not going to grab every single card here, but I'll grab a lot of them. So all you do is you just go like, some people even find it easier too if you have your thumb, if you kind of rotate your hand. And so you just go like that, spring them, and it looks a lot more magical. But you have to be really good at the spring when you do it because you don't want to start springing too late after you turn. And you got to make sure your body is turned so that, they, so that the cards don't hit your shoulder or go everywhere. So that is how to do the trick. And you can do the trick with, um, like I say, you could, do it, uh, you could have the card double stick taped on the ceiling. And all you would do is take the cards and toss them up. And then there's a card stuck to the ceiling, which is really amazing. Uh, you could do it against the wall, like I said. And you could throw the cards at the wall. Um, wherever you want to do, chalkboard if you want to do this in school. So it's uh, many, many options you can do that. All right, so that's the, uh, I'm, I'm calling this card on glass. Is what I think what I'm going to actually call it instead of, um, what did I say, cards on store counter or whatever. I'm going to call it cards on glass. Hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the School of Magic for this week. Make sure to post your success or failure stories if you tried the trick down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday for an all-new The School of Magic. Do you know how to mix up cards? You say, you are not cards. You are not cards. You get the, the two tubes and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the uh, real and usable. You're probably talking like a hundred dollar trick. So that's why. And, and it's a real. Their selected card will say that the King of Diamonds goes right on the table. And all.